Step 3. Wave equation 1. In this step, we will start thinking how to describe waves in a systematic way. So before we do that, let's think about how do we describe the motion of particles. So normally what happens, we start with some initial position and initial velocity for a particle. And then as we propagate uh, the particle through time, it moves uh, to time t1, uh, it, ha it has some other, other position and velocity, then it goes into t3, and finally it reaches the final uh, position with final velocity. The way how to do it for classical particles is following the following process. So we start with some initial condition, and then we have some way of calculating its position and velocity at the next time. And usually this is given by some small infinitesimal uh, time dt. And we apply this uh, uh, calculate process over and over again. That way we trace out this entire uh, trajectory until we reach the fi final condition or the final state. And for a particle, this uh, process in between that allows us to calculate the next position and velocity uh, is given either by Newtonian mechanics, Lagrangian mechanics, or Hamiltonian mechanics. So Newtonian mechanics phrases everything in terms of forces that are acting on the particle, and just by adding them up, you can actually compute where the particle will be found at the next small time step. The Lagrangian and the Hamiltonian mechanics are a little bit more elegant, they phrase things in terms of energy, but the process is very similar. It, they allow you to compute the trajectory that uh, eventually the particle follows. So can we apply the same uh, logic to waves? Well, first of all, how do we uh, uh, define a wave? A good first definition is that a wave is a, is a traveling, uh, self-sustaining disturbance of the medium through which the wave propagates. And we roughly uh, can have two types of classical waves. One are longitudinal waves, where the disturbance is uh, parallel with the uh, uh, direction of propagation. So you can think of a very long uh, uh, slinky and you uh, kind of introduce some uh, compression uh, and that travels through, through the slinky. A different, different type of wave is a transverse wave where the disturbance is parallel uh, to the uh, direction of propagation. And these are your usual waves on a string, so you can think of your uh, musical instruments as good examples. But here, if you think about it carefully, the medium does not travel much. If you zoom in either here into this longitudinal wave, what happens to the uh, individual particles uh, on the slinky, or what happens to the individual particles on the string or rope or whatever it is, they move either uh, to the left and to the right, but it's really just a small oscillatory motion like this, or here, it's, um, the motion is vertical, but again, they just move up and down as the wave itself propagates through the medium. So this idea of applying Newtonian mechanics does not really, uh, is not really well suited for describing waves. So we need a new way of thinking about waves and how they propagate through time. So we will start by saying that, um, that this disturbance or this wave in, uh, um, that's traveling in one uh, dimension, and let's say it's traveling in the positive x direction at some speed v, we will call this as some function psi x of t. So whenever we want to uh, talk about a general wave, we're just going to use the uh, Greek symbol psi. And it will have some functional form, which we usually call f. And this will depend on the position where the wave is and the time. And often we refer to this as the wave shape or the wave form, or just simply the wave. So we can start with some initial conditions, some initial position. We take our wave psi x of t, and at time t equals zero, it's only a, a function of space x. So if we want to introduce some pulse or a wave, we just set it to our desired functional form. And for example, it can look something like this. Here on this horizontal axis, we've got the uh, coordinate x, so this is our spatial coordinate, and at time t equals zero, our pulse or our wave has this uh, Gaussian form. And at some later time t, it will move to a new position, let's say over here. So how, how can we describe this? 
let's set up a coordinate system. And this coordinate system is stationary. So our zero, our origin of the coordinate system is not moving, but what is moving is the wave. So we start with some initial wave over here, this gray, gray form, and as time propagates, the, as time goes forward, the wave also propagates in the positive x direction. And the distance that it covers in this time is given by uh, the speed, the velocity of the wave, times the time. And now let's consider the same wave, but in a different coordinate system. And in this case, the coordinate system is moving with the wave. So we are constantly shifting the or origin of this new coordinate system S prime uh, to follow the wave. So in this coordinate system, the wave itself is stationary. And let's see how do we describe, uh, how do we transform from uh, X prime coordinate in the coordinate system S prime back into our original stationary coordinate system S. And that's very easy. Here in the coordinate system S, in time t, our wave travels this uh, distance given by x. In our primed coordinate system, which is moving together with the wave, the sum position on the wave begins, is given by coordinate x prime. But in order to recover x, we have to add uh, this distance v times t, because that's the distance that the uh, um, uh, origin in the coordinate system s prime has moved uh, in the time t. So you can easily see that x prime can be written in terms of the stationary coordinate system as x minus v times t. And with this, we can actually go back to uh, our initial kind of pipeline, how to propagate waves in time. We have our initial condition. And that's just given by our initial wave shape. And this is something completely arbitrary. We are allowed to choose it. For the case of a particle, we are allowed to choose where the particle starts and with what velocity. For waves, we're allowed to choose what the uh, uh, wave or the wave pulse looks like. And that's given by this function f of x. Then what we do, is we replace x with x minus vt. And that will give us our final, final state. So describing a propagating wave in time is very simple. We just have psi of x of t is equal to f, our functional form for the wave. But now the argument is x minus vt. So let's see how this works on an example. Let's say that we pick the following wave shape uh, as our f of x. So in this case, it's a Lorentzian, it's 3 over 10x squared plus 1. And it looks like this. So the numbers here are not really important. I just want you to think of it as some kind of shape that at time 0, its uh, position, its peak is at x equals 0. And then in order to make it propagate to, to travel in time, what we do is we just replace x with x minus vt. So if you plug that in into our f, it would be 3 over 10 times x minus vt squared plus 1. So if it propagates at uh, 1 meter per second, and uh, um, we look at where the wave is after uh, every second, it would trace out the following, following uh, trajectory. Now some remarks. We have been talking about uh, the wave propagating in the positive x direction, but we, we can easily talk about the wave traveling in the negative x direction just by changing in which way our coordinate system is moving. So if we have our functional form as f of x minus vt, and here we are considering positive velocity, then the wave is set to travel in the positive x direction. So whenever you have minus vt, it means the wave is uh, traveling in the positive x direction. And maybe you have guessed that if, if you have plus vt, so x plus vt for a positive velocity, then the wave is traveling backwards, it's traveling in the negative direction. And this is equivalent just like moving the uh, uh, primed co coordinate system backwards rather than forwards. And this approach is very simple, it's very intuitive. All you have to do is pick an initial wave shape and then replace your position coordinate with x minus vt or x plus vt and you will get um, 
um, a more general time evolving uh, propagation for the wave, but it only works properly for waves that do not change shape over time. So we will see examples of those waves and they're very important, but more general waves require us to have some um, procedure to describe also change of the shape uh, of the wave as it propagates through time. So this brings us to the, ne uh, to the next step where we will actually derive the wave equation.